Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Wolfpacker Show. My name is Ethan McDowell, and I am joined by Noah Fleischman. The transfer portal is open. Basketball season's in full swing, and Noah and I have not slept in a week. We are going to talk through all of the latest news around NC State athletics today, hitting on both basket basketball for men's and women's teams, the football team, their upcoming bowl game against Kansas State, and everything to do with the transfer portal and all of the wild developments surrounding that over the past few days. Um, before we do that, just a quick housekeeping note. Noah and I are both writers for the Wolfpacker.com. That's NC State's site on the On3 network, the fastest growing college sports website on the internet. Go check it out right now to join the Wolfpacker.com. It is only one dollar. Um, right now, these days, I mean, our the Wolfpacker.com is growing faster than it ever has before. It's something that's got me and Noah really excited. It's been really cool um, to see all of the new subscribers pouring in. So go check it out. It's a growing community, um, and you know. You can check out our message board our, and our website for premium portal scoops, um, team analysis, everything you could be looking for. We've got it there. So go check it out on the wolfpacker.com. All right. Noah, we're not wasting any time today. We're going to get right into it because there is a lot going on right now. Um, and man, I wanted to start off. Um, you had quite the day yesterday. You were running around um, going it was a day full of basketball coverage and a surprise award announcement. So um, first, we're going to start with the first um, you know, big event of the day, the statue unveiling for David Thompson. Just a really cool event with um, NC State fans you know, packing the front of Reynolds Coliseum to see um, David Thompson, arguably the greatest men's basketball player in ACC history, get his statue unveiled. Um, per NC State, they, it is the first. He is the first student athlete to receive a statue on campus. So really cool milestone for him, recognizing one of the greatest player athletes in NC State history. Noah, just what what was that um you know experience like getting to you were there in person, you you got to talk to David. Just what what was that um that day like for you? It was packed. I mean, it was at like eleven thirty in the morning yesterday. And there was more people there than I thought there was going to be. You know, fans, you know, packed the area. They had, you know, part of the band there. Everything was really well done. You know, the, the statue looks great. If you haven't seen it, go swing by Reynolds Coliseum. It's right on the corner, opposite from where the coaches' statues are um, out front. It was really well done. Um, you know, there's a great video that, that NC State put together, which is on, on Twitter right now. So I recommend if anyone has eight minutes, go watch it. It, it walks you through David Thompson and who he is and why he got a statue. Um, but he was really appreciative of NC State giving him a statue. He's the first, you know, of course, student athlete to be featured as, you know, in his sport um, uh, in a statue. And, you know, I got to talk to the sculptor that made it. It took 10 months to make the statue. It's it's 13 feet high, weighs almost 1,000 pounds. Um, it's bronze with, you know, it's got steel on the inside to reinforce it. Um, but it looks really, really good. It's him, if everyone hasn't seen it, it's him about to do an alley-oop kind of at the top of his jump right before he was allowed to drop the ball in the hoop since they couldn't dunk back in the day because um, it would be a technical foul. But he did, you know, talk about his dunk that he had on his senior night. But overall, really, really well done um, event, really well done statue. It's massively tall, and it looks really cool. So I, I'd re definitely recommend anyone go out there. But – he wasn't the only one there. There was a couple, you know, former, you know, foes, you know, former rivals. You know, there was it was just kind of cool to see, you know, people from other schools show up, you know, whether it be Virginia or North Carolina. Um, you know, Phil Ford, probably one of the best North Carolina defense basketball players of all time. He showed up and, and he was really, really into it as well. So overall, really good, you know, event and a cool thing to see. And, and maybe somebody else will get a statue in the future, you know, to put out there too. Yeah, it, it, it's cool. And um, outside of Reynolds, is, is, it's a perfect spot for it. Um, so when everyone's going into that historic uh, historic Coliseum now, they'll, they'll get a reminder of just how awesome he was. Because, man, you go back and you watch some of those like highlights. You look at the stats he was putting up. Man, he was a special player. And um, I, I don't know if he gets the respect he deserves nationally for um, everything he did. But um, it was cool to see just um, – him get so much love from the NC State community yesterday and um, get some much deserved recognition and props and um, enshrinement in NC State history forever with his statue. So that was, that was really cool. 
And um, Noah, then you had about two hours to go and write your stories, um, maybe get a quick lunch or something. And then you were right back at Reynolds because it was the annual game where they play in the Coliseum, the men's team. And they were back to play Maryland Eastern Shore. Um, Let's go chronologically here. The first big event of that game was a bit of a surprise at halftime. Why, why don't you tell um, me and the, the listeners about, about what happened during one of the media timeouts? Yeah, first media timeout hits. You know, they bring out four NC State football captains, Peyton Wilson, Brendan Armstrong, Keon Lassane, and Davin Van go out to midcourt. And they're like, okay, you know, great season. They're going to the Pop-Tarts Bowl. And then they go, well, we have something else. And like Peyton Wilson was a finalist for the Buckus Award, which which honors the best linebacker in college football. And they go, but he's not a finalist anymore. And they roll out the Buckus Award trophy. Coach Doran there, Tony Gibson, Peyton's family, his girlfriend, his brother, all there. And he gets it on the spot in the middle of Reynolds Coliseum. Kind of surprised him, surprised everybody in the building. Um, but, you know, I think that was really well done in a way to do it. And, and Matt Buckus was there, who's Dick Buckus' son. He kind of talked about this is the way they do it every year. You know, the surprise, whoever's getting it. They There, there, isn't a, there is a banquet in, in January that they'll have and honor them there. But to actually give them the award, they want to jump out, surprise them, do it around their friends and family, do it on campus or at home. And it was really well done. So caught everybody off guard, including Peyton, but he was super appreciative of, of the award, especially after, you know, sitting through the four hour ceremony on Monday and not winning, you know, he, he gets at least one trophy and then maybe you can follow it up this week with another, but really, really well done in a way to, to do it. And somehow NC state was able to keep it a secret, you know, Annabelle, the SID, she, she had known about it for about a week and, and kept it quiet and, and was able to pull it off. Yeah. What was the like reception like for him? I, I wasn't there. I only saw the um, videos, but um, it, it looked like um, that was like the perfect uh, venue, perfect opportunity to present him with that type of award. It, it, it looked like he, did he did he get a standing ovation? That's what it looked like in there. Yeah, it seemed like he did. You know, 5,500 people inside Reynolds, a sold out crowd. It was loud. It got even louder. You know, they first went through each captain and said, all right, like Keon Lassane gets a clap, gets progressively louder, gets to Devin Van. You get to Brandon Armstrong. He got a big clap. Peyton gets a big clap. And then all of a sudden, you know, a roar happens when the trophy comes. So it was really cool. Really well done. That was probably the best venue to do it at this point of the season and, and, and where everything's happening. That was probably the most amount of fans they'd be able to get, you know, in front of Peyton to do it. So it worked out well. Yeah, and um, you know, we were in Charlotte earlier this week for the Nagurski Award, and we talked to Peyton before then, and um, you know, he he was very humble about it, and you know, he was like, ah, oh, like the awards, like it doesn't like really matter, but he um, you know, he acknowledged that it's cool, it's, it's a cool moment for his career, and um, I mean, he was the best linebacker in the country this year, so I'm glad he he got the uh, recognition to reflect that, um, and then he's got the uh, Bednarik Award. Um, coming up on Friday, that's another Defensive Player of the Year award. He is one of three finalists for that. So, um, you know, we'll see if he uh, gets some deserved recognition there. But, um, hey, uh, if nothing else, the Buck Kiss Award, that's pretty awesome. And, um, you know, he'll get to bring that trophy home, and then they'll get to put one in the Murphy Center as well. Um, dude, I mean, there's no better recruiting pitch than um, than those trophies trophies that sit in the lobby of the Murphy Center. And now um, one of the Buckus Awards will sit there as well, again, enshrining Peyton into Wolfpack history forever. So an another really cool moment. And um, yeah, I guess then shortly after that, you had the rush to get a story up on um, the Buckus Award. And then, um, you know, huge news, probably the news of the men's basketball season so far. Um, MJ, MJ Rice played last night. And um, from what I understand, Noah, it, it looked like he played pretty well. He did. He hasn't played in their first seven games, obviously missed time during the preseason, you know, dealing with personal with personal things. Comes back to practice. He's been actually on the practice floor for the past few weeks. Um, and Kevin Keats, you know, asked him before the game, you know, shoot around like, hey, are you are you ready to go? And MJ was like, yeah, I'm ready to go. And and Keats wasn't sure. And MJ goes, quiz me on place. <laughs> so they sat down. He, they go over things. He sure enough was ready to go. So, you know, it was like, okay, so we, we see him out there doing warm-ups. He's, he's warming up with the team. First time we've really seen that this year. And it goes, all right, positive. But you don't know for sure. 
because he hasn't played and you don't know how they're going to use him or, or things like that. And then all of a sudden first media timeout comes in and, and he goes out there for a quick three minute, you know, little shift, got, got two points. Uh, but then his real impact came in the second half. He had nine points, five rebounds in the second half, you know, finished with 11 points and six rebounds in 10 minutes of play. Ooh. It's pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. So I think we'll, we'll see him more and more, you know, as the season progresses. Um, this is, I think, a way to ease him in doing it in front of, you know, in front of that crowd and against Maryland Eastern Shore. But, you know, big games coming up, including Tennessee, you know, in San Antonio, they're going to need him for that. Um, so I think it was a really positive sign to see 11 points in 10 minutes of play. Um, and if he can keep building off that, if you 11 points in 10 minutes, you play 30 minutes and score 33 points, I'm pretty sure Keith Kevin Keats would be pretty happy. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure he would be. But, um, yeah, I mean, you add another you know, versatile um, scoring player who can do a little bit of everything on the court. To an already like pretty like deep team with a lot of options, um, it's going to be an interesting to see how that rotation works out. Um, but uh, hey, yeah, if if he can, whether he eventually works his way into the starting lineup or he's just like you know probably one of the better players coming off the bench in the conference. Either way, that's huge. That could be huge for this team. And um, you know, great to see him get on the court. Like you know, he um, he was obviously not with the team for a little while there, so. Great to see him back. Great to see him contributing. Happy for MJ. And I'm, you know, excited to see what he does for the rest of the year. All right. Um, before we head to break, um, you know, we also wanted to um, talk about the women's basketball team. Um, you know, not much drama there right now. I mean, they are um, undefeated 9-0. and um, And this week they rose to number three in the country. That's huge. It, number three. South Carolina and UCLA, the only teams above them right now. NC State is the number one ranked team in the ACC. And, um, I mean, like, they're just dominating. They're having a great season so far. They they took – all of the returning players look like they took significant steps forward from last year. I mean, you have um, Sanaya and Isaiah. That backcourt looks like one of the best backcourts in the country right now. Either one of them can go off at any given moment. And, um, and then you have Zoe Brooks coming off the bench, who is probably one of the best freshmen in the country right now, who just, you know, plays like an upperclassman, not afraid of any moment on the court. And, um, you know, one, one of the best passers in the conference that I've seen this year and, um, you know, even nationally, even she, she's going to be a really, really good point guard for NC State and is already making a serious contribution. And then, like, you look through the rest of the roster, I mean – I personally wasn't expecting like Lacey Steele and Mallory Collier to come in and like make the instant impact they have. I thought they would by the end of the season. I, I oh, and um Maddie Cox as well. So three other freshmen in in the lineup, and you have um all of them are playing important roles in the rotation. I thought it was going to be a gradual thing. Like you bring in four top one hundred recruits, <laughs> they're going to play. But um, you know, you got to work them in gradually. But no, they've been really, really solid contributors right from the start. And then you have, um, you know, Madison Hayes, who's been shooting at a high level. You know, she's you know, one of the better defenders in the ACC. She's going to be able to guard the opposing team's best player, every best um, perimeter player every single night. Um, Mimi Collins is shooting extremely well right now and, you know, is always like a, uh, a great rebounding present, presence, great hustle player as well. And then River Baldwin. Shoot, she's um got a National Player of the Week award this week after dominating during their um, Paradise Jam tournament. So, you know, it's you can go through the entire roster. Everyone's playing pretty well right now, and um, and you know, you say that, and I'm not even sure they they've reached their potential. I think they they've still got a ways to go as a team that can continue to improve. <laughs> Heck, Wes Moore <laughs> definitely agrees with that. Um, you know, he's um he's you know quick to point out areas where his team can improve. And there's plenty of them where he wants to see his team take a step forward, but even where they're at right now, heck, they're the number three team in the country and they're in a good spot. So yeah, um, it's going to be an exciting basketball season for men's and women's at, at with the Wolfpack. So it'll be cool to see how that progressive progresses as the season goes on. All right. Um, right after our break, we are going to talk about the bowl game and then get into transfer portal discussion. But before we do that, I want to say a quick thank you to our sponsor, Game Time. Game Time is a ticket buying and selling marketplace 
whether you're looking for tickets to an NC State basketball game, whether you're looking for tickets to the bowl game, a concert, a comedy show, anything you could be interested in going to see in person, Game Time has it. And um, you can find Game Time on any app store or, or on your web browser at gametime.co. That's not .com, that is gametime.co. And when you go on there, if you go check out the app, my favorite thing about it by far is that when you go and you log in, you can see exactly where the view from your seat that you'd be purchasing. Um, right now I have games for um, I have t I have tickets pulled up for the Friday's Predators at Hurricanes game at PNC, and um, there's tickets for as cheap as thirty one dollars on there right now. And I'll hold it up for those watching on YouTube. You can see exactly where you'd be sitting. So pretty sweet deal in my opinion. And um, you know. And to make that deal even sweeter, if you use the app and you, or go in your web browser and you go to purchase a ticket, use code WOLFPACK. That's all caps WOLFPACK when you check out and you'll get $20 off your first purchase. So, hey, you could go to Friday's Hurricane game for extremely cheap. So go, go check that out and, um, yeah, use code WOLFPACK. All right, Noah, let's talk Pop-Tarts. It, it, it looked a little rocky for a little bit there. We weren't really sure where NC State was going to go bowling. Um, we, we both had our hearts set on the Pop-Tarts Bowl, both for its, you know, the pres prestige of it and also um, for to see hopefully NC State get to take bites out of a large edible mascot. There's a lot of factors why that bowl game was appealing. It looked like going into championship weekend, that's where they were headed. And then, um, then I heard it like the – you know, communication kind of cut out and wasn't sure. And we were thrown into some murkiness and then it was a waiting game. And we were waiting all afternoon Sunday. We had no idea where NC state was going. It looked like maybe the Gator bowl, maybe even the sun bowl. And there was a lot of uncertainty going, but they landed in the pop tarts bowl playing Kansas state. Noah, your initial thoughts on that matchup against the big 12 program. It's the one we were hoping for. It's the one Dave Dorn wanted. Everything worked out. Everything, you know, is great. But yeah, you know, after championship weekend kind of threw a wrench in things with Florida State missing the college football playoff, all these things. The Athletic wrote a great story kind of breaking down why the ACC games took a little bit longer to come out than everybody else's because they were trying to figure it out and, and who was going where and where could Notre Dame fall, depending on what other things were happening along. It was quite interesting to see and ended up shaking out in NC State's favor going to Orlando you know, for the first time in a while um, to be able to play in the Pop-Tarts Bowl. And, you know, if anyone wants to know, Dave Dorn's favorite Pop-Tart is the brown sugar cinnamon, which I believe is a, a very, you know, elite choice uh, of Pop-Tart. Um, but all, all in all, it's going to be a really, I think, really good, you know, not even just the game, but the event itself seems to be like it's going to be really well done. Um, and the game's going to be good, too, against Kansas State. Obviously, they've lost a couple things since the season's ended. Um, so it's a very winnable game, I think, at this point for NC State. We'll have more, you know, as the weeks, you know, come closer. You know, that one's on the 28th. So we are actually, what, three weeks away from today. So, yeah, it'll be, you know, really exciting to be in Orlando. Hopefully warm weather would be nice. And, uh, you know, I think we will we'll have a fun time down there, you know, with NC State. And, uh, you know, maybe go to Disney World or, or Universal while we're down there. Yeah, um, one of the uh, first uh, events that we've heard about. We haven't gone the full media schedule, but one of the first events is we get to go to a a, a pop tart and cheese it uh, tasting event. So, um, looking forward to that one. That that'll be an interesting one. Uh, this is going to be my first, uh, you know, actual travel for a bowl game because last year obviously it was the um, the Mayo Bowl. So it was we. I went down the the night before, and that's it. But we're going to be down there for a few days. It'll be cool to um, kind of soak in, soak in the environment there and uh, you know see the pack play in the Pop-Tarts Bowl. But uh, it's an interesting matchup. I mean, Kansas State, you know, they were in the running for the Big 12 title game there for a little bit, and um, they're, they're a really solid team. Uh, they, they lost their offensive coordinator, so that um, that doesn't help things, obviously, for them. But um, we'll, we'll see how – we'll kind of – we'll dive into that matchup a lot deeper – when it gets closer to game day, but it's, it's an exciting one. And um, of course, NC state now has that opportunity to get to 10 wins, which would be a massive, massive accomplishment for the program. All right. Um, let's dive in to the portal. Noah, it is that time of year. 
Um, we have been extremely busy trying to keep up with everything right now. I believe, Noah, do you even know like, how many players, what, what is our active count right now for, for the transfer portal? It's, it's in the high teens at this point. And um, 18, you know, I believe. 18, 18 Wolfpack players have either entered the transfer portal or declared their intentions to. And that includes, you know, um, starters like, you know, quarterback MJ Morris or nose tackle CJ Clark, um, you know, uh, rotation guys like defensive back Cecil Powell, who entered the portal today. Um, it's, you know, it's what college football is now, um, you know, like it or hate it. It's just there's going to be more there's going to be player movement like this every year. I know Wolfpack fans are going to see the 18 departures. You're going to get a little spooked. Um, let me emphasize that this isn't like this is normal. Like th it's it's the normal um, attrition for a college football team, especially last year. I mean, I think there was a lot of like there was no really not much attrition at all. Not many people left last year. So then you have um, you know kind of the people who maybe stuck it out one extra year when they were considering last year. Now they're leaving. And you have, um, you know, a lot of players that a, a lot of the contributors this year have the option to return. So na naturally the players behind them who want to play are going to go look for um, opportunities elsewhere. So wishing the best for all of them, but it, uh, it makes the first couple weeks of December just an absolutely just gripping period for um, Wolfpack fans. I mean, now, you're looking at it, and um, after uh, Elijah Groves, um, four-star linebacker from Tennessee, huge flip, by the way, for the Wolfpack. Um, they flipped him. He's the 21st commit in the class to raise NC State's recruiting ranking all the way up to 27. Um, so he's the 21st addition to the class, and it, assuming all of those players sign with the pack, they will have 74 total scholarships. Noah, that leaves 11 open right now. Like that—that that, that means they're going to have to go out, and I think they're going to add maybe another high school kid or two. You can find out who that would be on the Wolfpacker.com, and they're bringing in a lot of JUCO guys over the next couple of weeks. And I'm anticipating they'll land like two, three, four of those guys. I think they'll take multiple ju junior college recruits again this year after having so much success um, last year with, uh, you know, you know, bringing Red Hibbler. Bishop Fitzgerald and all of those guys. So I think they'll do that again. And um, then, I mean, I think you're looking at, it could be like a, you know, eight or nine transfers maybe. And it, it could be a really, really busy winter transfer portal for the pack. Um, Noah, if you were the general manager of NC State football and you were looking at the roster this year and you were looking at the portal, what are positions you would prioritize in the transfer portal this week? Well, there's an easy one, which is quarterback, which Absolutely. you need to build. You know, you build your offense around your quarterback, right? We saw NC State did that a little bit with Brendan Armstrong. They really built their offense around Kevin Concepcion. Uh, but you're going to build the quarterbacks, one of the most important positions on the offense, touches the ball every play. you got to know someone's good coming there. So that's probably priority one. Then you can look around a little bit. They could go running back if they'd like. You go receiver because they've lost, I think, five or six receivers to the portal already. So that's probably the big thing. And you could strengthen the offensive line a little bit too if you wanted to add some more depth there. So literally everywhere and everywhere on the offense, I think, you know, has got, you know, an opportunity, especially tight end. Um, but you look defensively. Do you go linebacker? Try to bring somebody in and replace Peyton Wilson? You probably do. So I think quarterback linebacker might be your two most, you know, important positions, which in all honesty, there are one, one of the two most important positions in football. You know, linebacker is viewed as kind of the quarterback of the defense at times, and, and the quarterback is obviously the quarterback. So we'll see what they do. They obviously had Grayson McCall coming to town this weekend. Um, competing with UCF at this point, it seems kind of is going to be their main competition. Um, but we'll see. You, you'd assume – McCall would rather go to the ACC than the Big 12, but you never know. Yeah, no, I'm keeping an eye on UCF here with McCall. Um, he's going to visit both um, both programs this weekend. And um, I heard um, and Pete Nakos reported that uh, the official, the in-home visit went really well. Um, the, the, 
you know, the staff was there, stopped by to meet with Grayson. Um, and I heard that they left a really good impression. Um, I think um, the words Pete used were, um, they blew him away. So that's important. But UCF is coming on strong here. I'm keeping an eye on the Golden Knights. Um, so I, I think um, the quarterback saga for NC State is probably far from over. Um, I think it's important to point out that um, the current outlook look of the quarterback market is going to change, um, especially once bowl games start to get played more more kids are going to enter the portal. More kids will decide to transfer. Um, so that's something to keep an eye on. But um, I think NC State's going to be in a good spot for a quarterback at, at one point or another. And um, Grayson is the first, you know, concrete target we're hearing about, but he's not going to be the last, in my opinion. So keep an eye on that. Um, you know, as, aside from that, I think you really want to bring in an outside receiver. I think you – could really use an, another playmaker on the outside there. Um, the main guy I'm looking at is Wesley Grimes. Um, familiar name for Wolfpack fans. He almost went to NC State, considered both the Pack and Wake Forest before picking the Demon Deacons. He went there, had a successful had a successful few years. Just um, now he's looking for a new collegiate home. And NC State just seems like the logical choice, Noah. I, it, like He's going to have plenty of suitors. Um, I know um, Gamecock Central reported that, um, you know, South Carolina's looking at him, is interested. I know, you know, Cincinnati, West Virginia, other Power 5 teams have offered him as well. So it's going to be um, interesting to follow, but there's clear playing time in the outside receivers room right now. So he could come in and um, carve out, you know, a role immediately. And, you know, he's a, he's a local kid. He's from Raleigh. So there's just a lot of factors working there to, um, you know, keep an eye out. And um, then, I mean, now you have to look at the offensive line. Um, it looks like Dylan McMahon is um, moving on. He's headed for the NFL draft. He is committed to the Shrine Bowl, which, um, you know, he hasn't announced anything to my knowledge, but, uh, you know, I, that's a pretty good indicator of where he's leaning. Um, that means you have to bring in a center because Lyndon Cooper's transferring. So you have to go in and get a portal center. They will have someone on campus, someone that I feel good about NC State's chances with. So keep an eye on that. Um, you find Again, we have the visitors list on the wolfpacker.com. Go look at it. But there's a, an established starter for a ranked team that's considering coming to NC State. So go check that out. Um, it's going to be a busy weekend. They're bringing in, um, you know, an, an, an potentially an, one of the top offensive linemen in the portal in addition to the, the, the center. So offensive line is going to be a top, top priority. And um, Noah, before we wrap up here, um, our portal discussion at least, uh, what is who is one player? If you could, if you could put anyone from the portal, I'm putting you on the spot here. Anyone in the transfer portal, within reason, we'll say, who would you add to NC State's roster for the 2024 football season? Within reason, but we can stretch it a little bit. Definitely, definitely. All right, well, let's go. Uh... With Will Howard. Yeah, I think that's a good pick. He's, he's you know, he's a guy that's going to command a lot of money, but there's a chance that NC State could be able to afford him if they can bring him down, I think, a little bit on what – nobody knows really what he's asking, but there's a chance he's going to ask for a, a decent amount that NC State could be able to compete with in the NIL market. Um, but he's a guy that if, if NC State were to bring him in, probably be a game-changing kind of quarterback, especially with the weapons that are going to be at his disposal in offense – um, and with how good the defense is plays, that I think will make NC State. If that if that were to happen, not saying it, it will or won't, but if it were to happen, NC State will be a top twenty team going into the year next year. Yeah, I agree. Someone on the caliber of Will Howard under center next season would drastically raise the uh, the ceiling of this team. I think at that point you start talking about um, potential expanded playoff chances, sneaking into that. Um, one of those last couple spots in the top 12. But um, Will Howard, yeah, game changer. He's a great quarterback. Um, obviously played for Kansas State, um, put up big numbers there um, through the air and on the ground. Uh, I have heard that NC State has been involved in his recruitment, but, uh, you know, so has USC. So have uh, plenty of other big-name programs that, um, you know, it's going to be tough. It's going to be uh, tough to bring him to Raleigh, but I think um, – Pack is trying 
So, um, or tried. So we'll, we'll see how that progresses. Like I said, it's, it's going to, you know, take a while, I think, for the quarterback room to get completely solidified. I think they're going to try to bring in two transfers even. So we'll, we'll see how that all works out. NC State is in a really good um, position to, uh, you know, be competitive in the NIL space when it comes to the transfer portal, I think. So we'll see how, how that all turns out but um it's going to be an exciting couple of weeks lots of visits lots of in-home trips for the staff the staff has been absolutely just on the road constantly this week so um, they're hard at work to bring nc state a very exciting month and um we have coverage of it all on the wolfpacker.com um after we hang up this zoom call i actually got word that um nc state's coaches are actually at um a game right now so um we'll um We'll post that there, but um, go check it out. And um, Noah, before we close out the show, is there anything else you wanted to mention? Don't think so. I think it's been an exciting week at NC State. Uh, you know, this week between men's and women's basketball doing their thing, portals open, continues next week. You know, both both men's and women's basketball team will be back in action. Both of them have a week off in between their games. Women are back on Sunday. Men are back next week. Tuesday or Wednesday, I believe, against UT Martin back at PNC Arena. So exciting next week, too. So I'm imagining we have not seen the last of the portal news. We've seen a lot of exits, no, no entries yet, no <laughs> no arrivals yet. But I, sooner or later, we're going to start seeing some portal arrivals. And I think once one streams in, the the, the floodgates are going to open up. Agreed. And, you know, keep an eye on this official visit weekend because it's pretty often like, you know, transfer portal players are not going to – mess around if they find a school that they like they're gonna commit so you know we saw it happen last year i think we'll see it happen this year we'll see who ends up joining the pack after the next couple weeks before we leave i did want to also mention um you know we we've talked about a couple program legends um another program legend caitlin tui is turning pro now um this is kind of expected news uh you know she's arguably one of the most um decorated, you know, cross country athletes in um, ACC history. She hold, she is a, and track, of course, she is a four time NCAA champion and, um, you know, holds NCAA records, a 10 time all American, nine time all ACC performer and a 2023 ACC women's athlete of the year. I mean, shoot, she's a legend and she's going to have a very pr successful professional running career. And, um, we were all um, fortunate and lucky to watch her over the past um, um, three and a half years of bring unprecedented success to NC State's, um, you know, distance running programs. All right. Well, that's all from Noah and I today. I um, really appreciate you all tuning in to this week's show. We will be back ne next Wednesday unless um, anything, you know, chaotic happens before that. And we have to hop on the microphone to, um, you know, keep you all updated on that. But we will be back soon for another edition of the Wolfpacker Show. Thank you all for watching and listening, and um, we'll talk to you soon.